So, normally when I talk about TV shows in my YouTube videos, I usually manage to wrap up my thoughts about the ending to uh, the seasons uh, I speak of before the next season begins. Unfortunately, that is not the case with Gotham as for some peculiar reason uh, I haven't uh, managed to speak about the wrap up and uh, the second season has already begun uh, which is really embarrassing for me but I have to make up for this laziness by uh, making an overdue discussion on uh, the ending of Gotham season 1. So, yeah. Let's talk. Now, last time I was talking about Gotham, uh, uh, Jim Gordon had uh, been demoted to security guard at Arkham Asylum uh, and uh, that uh, pretty much ended with uh, this uh, psycho Jack Gruber uh, running away from Arkham and uh, causing some uh, trouble in the city. Uh, hey, Gordon also uh, befriended uh, Leslie Tompkins a psychiatrist that uh, Bruce Wayne went to as a child and also befriended when uh, he uh, grew up. Now uh, uh, in Gotham, uh, Leslie also becomes Jim James Gordon's girlfriend after a while, uh, filling uh, uh, the empty void that was left when uh, Barbara, Jim's girlfriend, broke his heart and uh, left him in uh, Manage, managing to take care of Gruber, uh, James became a detective again and uh, was back on trying to clean up not just Gotham but uh, Gotham's uh, so-called finest. But uh, besides uh, all the goings on within the uh, also corrupt uh, police department in Gotham, we have also been following the uh, underworld as in uh, uh, Penguins or Oswald Cobblepot's plans to, uh, you know, b become uh, top dog, well, top penguin. Uh, and he has uh, been scheming and manipulating like nobody's business with uh, Falcone, who has also been uh, manipulated by Fish Mooney, who has gotten this uh, uh, girl goon to uh, uh, sort of uh, become his girlfriend or at least uh, friend. Uh, reminding him of his mother. It's kind of creepy, but it makes sense. And when he finds out about uh, this, so oh, he is not showing much mercy to this poor girl, Lisa, strangles her to death in Mooney's uh, club. Youch. And Fish Mooney gets into some hot water, <laughs> so to speak, because uh, she gets uh, uh, tied up uh, at an operating table being taken care of by this uh, psycho, almost dying in the process, but manages to leave in a boat before things get worse, or at least that's what she believes. <laughs> Bruce Wayne, tiny Bruce Wayne, future Dark Knight, still a child, but uh, still a very sharp person, nonetheless, despite his uh, age and size. And um, of course, now that he is uh, he has uh, gotten to hang out with Selina Kyle, who's going to become a Catwoman someday. Uh, he has had t time to, you know, be a little happy and have a little fun after what happened to his parents. But uh, that's not to say it's all fun and games for him, as uh, he uh, kind of uh, wants to, you know, be very friendly with Selena giving her a snow globe and she rejects him so harshly I mean she pretty much is a, like a cat in the way that how one moment she is all cuddly and purring and you know nice to be with and the next she just scratches you so much that it stings really bad Alfred defines this uh, snow globe that he wanted to give Selena uh, but he smashed it because he was so uh, upset about how she rejected him. Alfred uh, 
helps Bruce to deal it, with it in uh, not so much a thoroughly way, but a, w a way that is more uh, accustomed to Alfred in, uh, you know, suck it up. So let's just clean up uh, the shards of uh, the snow globe and forget about this broken heart. And yeah, that's not very uh, warm of him, but hey, that is one explanation for why Bruce Wayne is the way he is when he's grown up and, you know, puts on a bad costume and beats the crap out of criminals. He, he had a very stern, but uh, in his own way, loving uh, father figure. And of course, uh, Gotham is uh, anything but uh, running short on uh, future Batman villains as we come across, uh, well, not really the Scarecrow, but Scarecrow Sr., the father of Jonathan Crane. Gerald Crane, played by Julian Sands, who uh, has played uh, Jor-El on Smallville, so he's uh, very experienced when it comes to playing uh, the fathers of uh, DC Comics characters. So. So uh, he does uh, a lot of uh, crazy stuff and uh, injects this uh, serum into uh, poor Jonathan who then sees a scarecrow and he is terrified and rest is history I suppose or will be history anyhow. So in the blind fortune teller we uh, have a murder case being investigated by James uh, uh, with a lot of help from Leslie, his new girlfriend. Uh, so uh, it's really interesting to see how, uh, you know, she wants to make him uh, uh, lighten up, open up and uh, such and uh, helps him to take care of uh, uh, this strange uh, murder. And uh, talking to these uh, two families, having a feud. What's so interesting with this feud is that uh, uh, it involves the parent the future parents of uh, Dick Grayson, who uh, already uh, like to wear garish outfits. And a lot of them being taken to the police station for uh, interrogation in their garish outfits. Yeah, they better get really used to that. Interestingly enough, it seems like uh, a certain boy who turns out to be the killer of his own mother. On one hand... Uh, I prefer the Joker having a mysterious background that we really don't know who he was or what his life looked like before well, the acid that turned him into the clown prince of crime. So, um, yeah, but on the other hand, the actor who, uh, did, who played that character did it so tremendously good. <laughs> well, that, you know, the, the uh, insane stare and that smile and the, the way he started to it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And, uh, well, was he really the future Joker? Well, uh, that's kind of the uh, problem with the internet. On one hand, it's such a good way of finding out stuff, but on the other hand, it's really a good way to get stuff spoiled for you in advance when you haven't seen certain episodes yet. Or, uh, yeah, but on the other hand, I kind of have myself to blame and then comes a very interesting uh, episode, Red Hood, in which a band of uh, bank robbers uh, not just uh, uh, go on a robbing spree, but uh, one of the members of the gang puts on a red hood as a disguise. And uh, for some reason, uh, this uh, red hood in particular has a very odd effect on uh, not just uh, this uh, gang, but uh, their surroundings that... The, they spark a Robin Hood style legend. And because of this uh, strange hood, the uh, uh, gang keeps shrinking one by one. Most of them dying because uh, every one of them wants to be the Red Hood. And of course, um, let's get back to Fish Mooney. Well, um, after she tried to leave Gotham on a boat, she, she gets abducted and wakes up at a strange place where... Uh, people are getting their organs harvested. Uh, Fish uses her uh, skills in being manipulative and scheming to uh, find out what the hell is going on. 
and uh, it's very interesting to see her outside of her element when she's not sashaying around in her club and uh, being uh, all uh, melodramatic. Uh, so I was really glad to see this uh, change with her, see her uh, be at a really great disadvantage instead of being on top of things. That made the character very a lot more interesting, I have to say. She finds out that it's the doll maker. Uh, a notorious DC Comics uh, villain uh, who uh, is, uh, you know, not just harvesting organs, but he's pretty much playing Dr. Frankenstein in, in that he's taking different body parts and putting them together, including one poor person played by uh, horror icon Jeffrey Combs. And then we had this uh, story arc with uh, uh, Wayne uh, Tech, or was it Wayne Core? Wayne Enterprises, well, the, the Wayne family company in a way that's uh, apparently uh, doing something very bad to uh, Bruce or planning to do something bad against him, sort of like what Oscorp was going to do with Peter Parker in the Amazing Spider-Man movies until uh, they, they decided to reboot once more. One uh, evening, uh, somebody knocks on the door to Wayne Manor, and it turns out to be uh, an old army body of uh, Alfred's, who uh, seems to just want to meet up with uh, his uh, old friend, but uh, uh, then he suddenly snoops around in uh, Bruce's uh, study and stabs uh, poor Alfred. So uh, it's uh, Bruce who finds him uh, almost bleeding to death in his pajamas. Not Bruce's pajamas, but his wing. Pajamas. Uh, anyway, so uh, Bruce uh, wants to uh, investigate this whole thing, gets a little bit of help from Selena, and uh, there's this really interesting moment when uh, Bruce is on the street uh, doing this uh, detective work when uh, Oswald Cobblepot is walking by without noticing him, but suddenly Oswald is holding up like he has this really strange, ominous feeling. La -la 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 -la. I don't know why, but suddenly it felt like every tooth inside my mouth was being punched out by somebody. <laughs> so yeah, even when Bruce Wayne is a child, he's scaring the crap out of the penguin. And he doesn't even know why that's happening. <laughs> yeah, Bruce uh, tracks down uh, the almost killer of Alfred together with uh, Selina. And uh, you know, he pretty much gets his uh, Batman on... Uh, you know, he's this close to uh, being, you know, like uh, Batman in the Dark Knight when he is interrogating the Joker. This uh, man is uh, almost uh, uh, hurting both kids really badly, but it's Selina who pretty much uh, kills him. Uh, and I have a feeling that uh, she felt that... Uh, she had to spare Bruce from uh, killing another human being as that's something she's had to do to survive on the streets and she doesn't want Bruce to, uh, you know, go through that. And uh, I can, I could tell from uh, Bruce's reaction as well that uh, t taking uh, another person's life is a very serious thing so that might be what uh, keeps him from killing in the future. And uh, also uh, while... Uh, Bruce has uh, tried to go to the bottom with uh, this uh, mystery of why uh, the Wayne company, let's just call him that, uh, wants to uh, uh, go after him. Uh, he takes more help from Selena, taking her to this ball. And uh, then uh, we uh, get into something that we haven't explored that much yet in the show that Bruce Wayne is still a child and uh, even though his childhood ended pretty much when his, his parents uh, were shut down, he uh, really doesn't think of himself as a child anymore. He has grown up really fast but uh, everyone else still sees him as a kid uh, at that uh, dance when he's uh, dancing with Selena and uh, when, he's, uh, when he uh, sneaks into... Uh, the CEO's office to find some secrets and he shows up being all uh, condescending and you know uh, when I was your age I would never turn down the chance to have a cookie 
Oh, wow. Like, uh, kicking him out of his own company and, you know, insulting him. What a cookie. What a... Hey. And then he... Bruce, when he gets kicked out, uh, meets uh, uh, Lucius Fox, who is, of course, the one who uh, makes up... Maybe not all, but uh, many of the bad gadgets in the future. So it, it's cool to see them meeting this early. And uh, Barbara Keane, who... Uh, in my opinion, has been the most unlikable character in the show. Sort of makes up for this, not by, you know, becoming a nicer person, but, you know, uh, embracing her badness, uh, getting into the hands of the ogre, this uh, serial killer who is like uh, uh, a really terrible Christian Grey. What the hell am I talking about? There? There's pretty much... Not much of a difference between those two. So the, the ogre uh, usually uh, keeps all of these women prisoner and uh, uh, treats them like slaves. And when he's uh, fed up with them because they are not the one, he has them killed and uh, thrown out like yesterday's garbage. But with uh, Barbara, however, he realizes that there already is something really twisted about her. So he doesn't really have her killed well he keeps her prisoner but uh, he kind of knows that uh, she is uh, messed up enough to uh, uh, be uh, the woman in his life or whatever you may call it so uh, they go down to go home to her parents and oh my god that is just horrible Jim Gordon who has had a lot of stuff on his plate already comes to her rescue I or at least that's what he believes and uh, she asks to have uh, uh, Leslie uh, be her uh, psychiatrist because she knows that they are together now and uh, she of course doesn't like that very much Leslie uh, uh, argues that uh, she doesn't know much about trauma when she asks for her uh, counseling, but oh boy, does she get a lot of experience with trauma. Uh, I, I understand that uh, psychologists have to put up with a lot of stuff, but you know, attempted murder shouldn't really be one of those things. And like I said, Gordon has had a lot of his plate with, uh, you know, uh, digging up something on uh, C Commissioner Loeb, who is a real scumbag. Well, Loeb, uh, for one thing, had has a daughter who is being uh, uh, kept in a house uh, who is uh, like almost 40 but still acts like a teenager and doesn't re realize what's going on with her because of a traumatic experience uh, in her childhood and uh, well and there she's being kept by these two this elderly couple who are also criminals so uh, ultimately it all uh, Escalates into Fish Mooney finally returning to Gotham and getting Selina as uh, one of her uh, hench, hench women, hench, hench girls. But well, Selina starts working to, for Fish anyway, uh, which leads to, you know, uh, Mar uh, Maroni getting his brains blown out, Falcone deciding to leave Gotham just like that after controlling the crime in Gotham, he just, eh. uh, I didn't really like the way he just uh, went out, exit stage left like that, the, that was kind of uh, anticlimactic, but uh, just to see how, you know, all of the gangsters, gangster bosses uh, being uh, taken down one by one, you know, the penguin exclaiming, I'm the king of Gotham! Yeah, like that's gonna last very long. I mean, it's pretty much like uh, with the Red Hood, uh, except in a much bigger scale. He probably won't be king for that much longer. So yeah, uh, that's what's so great about uh, Robin Taylor as the Penguin, that even though he looks and walks in a very silly way and has a very strange vocabulary, he really has no respect for human life. Like, uh, he pulls strings with pretty much anyone he can even uh, taking over this uh, shoddy restaurant so that he can get this revenge on uh, Maroni and while uh, Penguin uh, is this really beastly human being he has this 
great affection for his mother and just wants her to be proud while not knowing the truth about his business at the same time. So when Meroni shows up at his club, which used to be Fishes, uh, they have this really awesome scene where uh, uh, Maroni is pretty much uh, spilling the beans to Penguin's mother about what a uh, cold-blooded killer her son is. And uh, she is uh, like horrified about this and uh, uh, Oswald has to juggle uh, trying to calm down his mom and uh, you know being really pissed off at Maroni at the same time. So wow. He gets this uh, assassin or hitman out of prison. Uh, thinks that he's gonna kill Maroni, but uh, Penguin has been messing around with the gun, so uh, he, he pretty much gets this uh, mob war escalating uh, to his own uh, own benefit, despite that it uh, take, gets a lot of innocent people, and not so innocent people for that matter, uh, savagely killed. Wow, you... Jesus. Season 1, you know... I got kind of bored with uh, Gotham, and so I guess that's one explanation for why I hadn't watched much of it. Uh, like uh, a few weeks before season 2 began, I watched all of the episodes of season 1 that I hadn't watched yet. And to my own surprise, I realized that I had gotten, I started to kind of like it a little bit more than I first did. I had gotten used to this... Uh, stylized look of Gotham City, this a little bit of uh, uh, Joel Schumacher, a little bit of Tim Burton, a little bit of Christopher Nolan. Well, besides the visual influences, we get a little bit of H.P. Lovecraft and Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, Touch this really gruesome uh, gothic look and uh, I had gotten really accustomed to that after being somewhat annoyed with it. Maybe they had uh, toned it down a, a slight bit, I don't know. Anyway, so, yeah, uh, I don't know really what to do next if I'm going to watch uh, season 2 or just forget about it and just stick to Supergirl, because I, I'm i really looking forward to Supergirl. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But uh, it looks really interesting now that uh, Bruce has found that secret entrance to this cave that apparently was being used by his father, Thomas, and that's how... Bruce finds the bad cave rather than just uh, finding it on his own. Yeah, I mean, this is its own uh, interpretation, obviously, so I don't really have a problem with that. Even if I might be interested in uh, watching season 2, I can't guarantee that I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, keep watching it. Considering how many different shows there are that I love to watch. Doctor Who, Arrow, The Flash, and there's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Supergirl like I mentioned, uh, Last Man on Earth, The Walking Dead. There's like a, a crap ton of shows on TV that I want to watch, but exactly how many of them I could watch, that, that's very difficult to say. Exactly which shows I will be making vlogs about in the future, well... Don't ask me because I don't know. I haven't even been able to speak about Edward Nygman. He had such a great uh, story arc, especially when he killed a cop that was being mean to the girl he liked and started to get all schizo. Oh, god damn it. But that actor is doing such a terrific job being the future Riddler. So, <clears throat> I'm really pissed off that I haven't talked about more. Uh, that more about him so uh sorry for this uh, overdue vlog sorry for uh, not uh, s talking about every little thing in this uh, series but uh, uh. goodbye until later